What is going on my beautiful friends and family? Welcome back to another video today without the back glow lights. What do you think about this? A little bit more of a neutral look, but I wanna review a video from Dr. Sam Bunting and she's one of my favorite dermatologist channels. This video is called, What Dermatologists Want You To Eat For Glowy Skin. So this is all gonna be about healthy skin. It's gonna be seven different things that she references in the first video, she got from a lecture from another doctor that she really likes named Dr. Zoe Dralos. And this doctor gave a really long lecture suggesting that the foods that we eat have a huge impact on the health of our skin. Dr. Sam Bunting also then kind of goes in the first minute of her video over the fact that low glycemic diets and things like that can be really helpful. And then she starts up with the first of these seven things. So without further ado, let's jump in and see what number one is. let's go through the seven things I try to eat on a daily basis. Now, most of you will know that I prefer eating food in its natural state and cooking from scratch. I'm not a big fan of processed foods. And I think that when you really focus your mind on the foodstuffs that can make a big difference to both skin and health, it becomes very easy to try to incorporate those in your diet through the day. So foodstuff number one to start with is carrots. Eating your carrots um, is actually a thing full of carotenoids which are the precursor of retinoic acid which of course we all know is super important for skin health. It's a great skin food and Dr. Zoe Dralos recommended eating two-thirds of a cup a day not too much of a stretch. So that's number one, eat your Okay, so, so far, really liking the video. She suggests doing mostly whole foods. I think most of us kind of already know a lot of this stuff. The least amount of processed food possible is gonna be the healthiest for not only your skin, but also your body. But I, I'm actually surprised with number one being carrots. Obviously, beta carotenoids, which are precursor to vitamin A. So it's great to be able to produce your own vitamin A. That way you aren't deficient in that. Vitamin A is really effective for helping with pimples, obviously, because Accutane and Retin-A, all that kind of stuff really uh, focuses on vitamin A. So yeah, this is all looking good so far. Let's see what's next. Carrots. Number two, eat a tomato a day. Now tomatoes are brimful of all sorts of skin loving uh, ingredients and um, chemicals, but the main one being vitamin C and lycopene is also present in tomatoes. So great for skin health. We know vitamin C is essential for collagen assembly, for neurotransmitters in our brains, and they're also part and parcel of our immune system. So fundamental must be replaced every single day. Okay, so tomatoes is the next one. So carrots, I was pretty stoked about because I have a couple of carrots every single day. Every morning I start in juice with carrots, celery, and spinach. Uh, with tomatoes, uh, maybe not perfect with tomatoes. I really only get my tomatoes in when I'm having ketchup or I'm having tomato sauce with spaghetti. Uh, so maybe I should be better about that. I thought it was pretty cool though that she mentions lycopene. Lycopene is an antioxidant and uh, it's actually been proven in studies to help with um, skin cell health. Basically protecting the skin cell from UV rays. So maybe get a tomato in every single day or something else that has a lot of lycopene in it. Food stuff number three, olive oil is going to help you both in terms of its vitamin E consumption, but it will also help you absorb other nutrients from other foods. So drizzle some olive oil over your tomato. Okay, interesting. So I feel like there's conflicting arguments in the acne and skin world when it comes to oils and fats in general. Like for example, you have some people on one end of the spectrum that really believe that like no fats is the best possible thing. This, you know, like Nina and Randa, they really advocate for an extremely, extremely low fat and oil uh, diet. And so this is interesting actually to hear. I would love to be able to ask Dr. Sam Bunting if cooking the olive oil changes it because she said drizzle it on things that you're already eating. So that would be the raw form. I wonder if cooking it is still going to give you the same benefits you're still gonna get that vitamin e or if that's maybe not the best idea this is an interesting list so far though number four guess what avocados that's probably no surprise but half an avocado a day is going to deliver loads of goodness including vitamin e including carotenoids like lutein um, and good fats so half an avocado combine that with your tomato and your olive oil salad's looking pretty good right yeah, so far it sounds to me like you could just make a salad each day and get all of these things in. Avocado also has a ton of other micronutrients, uh, polyphenols and uh, phytonutrients, which are things that you can only get from vegetables and fruits from plants, basically, because um, they are not able to be turned into like supplements and powders and things like that. So you're also getting the benefit of protecting your immune system and adding tons of antioxidants into your body. So fun facts. Number five 
blueberries. Now blueberries are an absolute powerhouse when it comes to antioxidants. So we're all very caught up in supplementation, but the reason I say eat your food from scratch is because there's so much more complexity to the antioxidants that you'll find in natural foods. Blueberries contain something like 13,000 different phytochemicals in precise quantities. So a cup full of blueberries should be an absolute essential if you wanna eat for skin and general health. Um, one of my favorite ways to incorporate those into overnight oats um, with some almond milk and some yogurt for a really delicious fiber rich breakfast. Mm, overnight oats are, they are pretty good. I agree with that. Okay, most important question I'm gonna ask you guys in this video. Are you ready for this? This is really important. How do you pronounce blueberries? Or do you pronounce it blueberries? Blueberries? I say blueberries. <laughs> I feel like as soon as she said that, my brain was like, what, what is she saying? Blueberries? Uh, like I said, tons of phytonutrients that you can only get from plants. Blueberries have one of the highest antioxidants levels of all fruits. So yeah, I have these every single morning in a smoothie. Food number six, and I might well add it to those overnight oats, is an apple, the humble apple. Now you must eat that with your skin on, skin on for skin food, because something like eight thousand different chemicals that are helpful um, in terms of your health and well-being are existing in the humble apple. So obviously a good source of vitamin C too, but take that apple, grate it up, mix it in with your oats and your blueberries, and you really are starting the day on a really strong basis. I don't know if you guys just saw me cracking my neck. Forgive me for that. <laughs> I know that makes some people cringe. Uh, there she goes again with that blueberries. Uh, apple, actually, very interesting. I haven't had an apple. I don't even remember the last time I had an apple. Not an apple person, but maybe I should become an apple person. And there's also so many different apples. I really never know which one I actually really like the most. I know Granny, I think those are the green ones. I know those ones are for baking and putting in pies, but I think that's one of my favorite ones because they're so sour. But everyone always cringes when you say it. They're always like, it's only for baking. That's a pie apple. I think Fiji, Fuji apples are also really good but interesting yeah the skin I always eat it with the skin also the same thing with any like anything else like um, for example like potatoes I always eat those with the skin because that's where most of the nutrients are hiding now particularly in summer number seven comes into play so foods that are rich in lycopene now one of the best is watermelon but you can also seek out other orange and red foodstuffs so tomatoes have lycopene papaya guava um, strawberries, they all contain um, lycopene, which is really helpful in protecting skin from ultraviolet damage. Um, plus they're delicious too. So those are things that I really think about. Okay, so interesting. She's saying the lycopene is so important, um, and that's why she mentioned watermelon for summertime. Something that's really interesting about lycopene is that it's an antioxidant that is red in color. So if you don't really know if something has lycopene in it, just look at it and does it have red on it or inside of it? Like strawberries, obviously, definitely lots of lycopene. Um, something like watermelon, not red on the outside, but when you cut it open, red probably has lycopene. Of course, also you can just Google it, but yeah, I'm liking this list so far. Let's see what, how she rounds this up. Building into my um, everyday eating habits um, on the background of a good quality protein um, based diet. So I think chicken, yogurt um, and cheese rather than milk, butter and red meat as the sort of fundamental proteins in my diet. I look for low glycemic index carbohydrates, so brown rice, sweet potato rather than white rice and white potatoes. And then I think about supplements that I think that are difficult to get. Okay, I definitely agree with her with the low glycemic stuff, trying to eat things that are brown rice and whole grain, whole wheat, not eating things that are super sugary, not eating super simple starches unless you're mixing it with, you know, high protein and, and uh, you know, good fat foods because then that can bring down the glycemic index rating and the breakdown but interesting that she said she thinks that you shouldn't have dairy but you should have cheese i thought that was a very interesting like like difference that she says that because for me personally when i was having dairy of any type it didn't matter if it was milk or if it was cheese or if it was yogurt or if it was you know protein powders whatever it was you guys know my story that was causing me huge cystic breakouts so it's actually really interesting to, to hear her say that i have a theory i know that lactose levels in cheeses are a lot lower than just drinking a glass of milk especially the harder the cheese the lower the lactose level so a lot of people who are lactose intolerant will be able to eat like parmesan for example 
example, much easier than they'll be able to eat something like mozzarella. Still though, I don't think that's, I can't, I can't see a reason why you would need cheese and why that would be good for your health. I can only see that it would be less bad than milk for your health and your skin. So that's definitely something I would love for her to expand upon. I'd also like to hear why she thinks that chicken is better than red meat. Um, I have my theories on that one too, but yeah, interesting. Okay, let's hear what she has to say about supplements. To get without really struggling to consume large quantities of certain foods. So I always supplement with vitamin D all year round. You probably know that. Um, I think about getting omega-3s, organic flaxseed is a great source. Um, and I think about taking a good quality mineral supplement, not like Solgar for that. Things to avoid, there's no need to drink water excessively. There's zero evidence um, that I've come across for really adding much to health benefits. Obviously drink to satisfy first, but don't consume liters and liters of water. It's not gonna help skin hydration. Eating your good fats are. Avoid fried foods, anything that lovely caramel crispy coating, that means you're just encouraging glycation of your collagen and obviously having a negative impact on other important organs too. So minimize fried foods and avoid your high glycemic carbohydrates. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of her video right there. Definitely obviously agree with not eating as eating as little fried food as possible. I don't think we even needed to go over that, but it, obviously. Um, what she says there about water, very interesting. So I agree with her that there is a certain limit, right? Where when you're just drinking like 15 gallons of water, okay, no one's doing that. But you know, when you fill up that giant jug with you and you're carrying it around like a freaking bodybuilder and you're just chugging water all the time and peeing every five minutes, you know, there's a certain amount of water that your body is just passing through. It's not actually benefiting you. But I would say that the majority of people are dehydrated. The majority of people are walking around not drinking enough water. I'm even guilty of this, and I I think I'm pretty good with water. At some points, I'll realize like, yo, sure, you drink a little bit of water today, but you actually have been slacking. And I would say that if this advice is good, but uh, I think it can be interpreted wrong when she says just drink enough water, you know, that you feel satisfied. I feel a lot of people will take that as, okay, I'll just drink water whenever I want to, or whenever I remember. A lot of times people don't remember to drink the right amount of water. A lot of people, I, I know like you and me will go all day and be like, oh man, it's been five hours since I actually drank some water. And then when you drink some water, you'll have like a couple gulps and then it will be another couple hours. Your body does need a certain amount of water. And I would say that that's a highly important factor for the health of your skin and just for the functioning of your entire body. Then she goes over supplements. And I think what she said is really awesome. The actual, this is pretty crazy. Vitamin D, the majority, it's over 60% of Americans are lacking and in, insufficient in vitamin D. Isn't that crazy? And then also the there's a huge number, I don't remember exactly, but a huge number of Americans are also deficient in omega-3s. So I also thought that was pretty interesting. And then she said she takes a supplement just for overall minerals and probably vitamins as well. And I think that's always a good idea too, just to kind of cover all the bases because like she said, not everyone has a perfectly diverse diet. Not all of us eat enough of certain foods that provide, you know, these small amounts of minerals that add up to the daily amount that you should have. So I do think that's probably a good um, way to do it. And I do the same things as she does. I also supplement with B12 and, and so like yeah vitamin D B12 and omega 3s I supplement those every single day as well as a multivitamin and some protein I actually have um, a link I use this company called Vivo Life I'm an athlete of theirs if you guys ever want to check them out because I know a lot of people ask in the comments before uh, it's Brian 10 that I'll get you a 10% discount of that I'll put it in the description below I'm not not everyone's really into supplements all right so there we have it Dr. Sam Bunting's video about the seven foods we should be eating every single day for glowing skin healthy skin I actually really agree with with pretty much everything she's all seven of these foods are really really important and are really really good for you to build this habit it will take some time obviously but i think uh if you just like have a couple of meals that you kind of return to every single day or every other day it'll kind of make it easier so that you're not thinking like okay i got three out of seven but how am i gonna get a tomato in by the end of the night instead if you just kind of end up having a side salad every single night with your dinner then there you go you just covered three things you know avocado and tomato and maybe a little olive oil or something like that so i think that does make it a lot easier so here's my challenge i want to know how many of these seven foods are you guys eating each day let me know in the comments below we could all be better i'm not perfect either but it's fun to hear what you guys have to say if you guys haven't checked out my favorite skincare brand of all time check out banish use my code brian5 it'll get you five dollars off an order of fifty dollars or more i'll put a link to that in the description below that will also help keep your skin glowy healthy and beautiful by applying vitamin c glycolic acid alpha hydroxy acids all sorts of really good things that just really help our skin stay vibrant so check that out and with that my beautiful friends remember you are not alone you are beautiful and you're part of team acne i'll see you guys in the very next video